Um, but we still had the previous owner's license plates on the car. So they just see us rolling up with kanji plates, and they didn't think anything of it and let us through. Nothing ever came mm. of it, man. We uh, we got in at 4. We had PT at 6 that morning. We got two hours of sleep, maybe, probably like an hour after you consider <laughs> like the time to fall asleep and then wake up to go to PT. And, um, yeah, dude, that shit was ass. That was the worst, like, two days of my life. <laughs> I know. So I knew you had went with her to go get that car, but I didn't know, like, all the shit that had happened. And yeah. hearing that story compared to when we went and picked up my car is, like, night and day. <laughs> dude, you, our trip was cakewalk, dude. That was actually, like, a lot of fun getting – and that we had, like, a nice drive on the way back. Like, you know, nothing yeah. broke. It, that was actually – The car worked, yeah. Yeah, everything say. worked how it was supposed to. And the chaser was smooth for being as low as it yeah. was and stanced out. Like, it really drove very nicely. Yeah, we'll we'll post a video of us go going to pick up the chaser for those that haven't seen it. It's a couple years old, but that was a good. Trip, it was man. not that eventful. <laughs> it was not. No, I think. I mean, shit. We even broke curfew for that trip too. Um, did we? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you're like, well, I guess we were, now that it's got you involved, you're like, did we? We I allegedly did not. We allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, that was a fun I mean, trip, we could, dude. That was yeah. that was a good one. But yeah, every trip where we pick something up was eventful for some way or another. Like Charlton went with me to pick up the the SEMA, mm-hmm. and it was the same thing. We showed up at the address, and like nobody was there. And the address that we showed up to <laughs> was a house in like at like the base of Mount Fuji. Mm-hmm. Um, not literally the base, but it was the town Fujiyama. I think was the no, that's what the mountains called. What the fuck was the town called? Um, hold on. I'm gonna look this shit up because now I'm. It's gonna drive me nuts. Fuji no Mori. Hmm. I can't confirm whether that's true or not. I'm just taking. Fuji no Mia. Sorry, Fuji no Mia. <laughs> uh, we picked it up in Fuji no Mia, which is a really really cool small town, like right outside of Mount Fuji, and. Uh-huh. Uh, so we picked it up there. So anyway, so we show up and it's like th- this little, you know, you remember the small town back roads in Japan. There are all those houses mm-hmm. and the brick walls and there's like a street with no shoulder. You know what I mean? Like school mm-hmm. kids will be walking down them when they're going to and from school, whatever, like very typical anime shit. So Charlton and I are walking from the train station to this this house and we show up at this house and nobody's there. But the only reason we recognize that this might be the place is because there was a Lexus, like a GS four thirty, like one of the new GSs. Uh-huh. And uh it was sitting in the driveway and it was like kind of torn apart, looked like a parts car. And I was like, all right, mm-hmm. like I'm pretty sure this cat's a car dude and this would make sense. And so I like roll up to knock on the door and the door is just cracked open. Like the door is not closed at all. Like I could see oh, inside shit. this person's house. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if any, uh, you know, and Konnichiwa, you know, trying to like fucking yell around through this dude's house. And uh, I was just like, what the fuck, dude? Nobody's here. So I'm calling Dan and I'm like, Dan, this guy was going to meet us here and now he's not here. And Charlton and I go to uh, um, 7-Eleven just down the street. We get some fucking, you know, onigiri and some fucking, um, what are the buns called? The steam buns. What do they call those? Mon. Pizza mon. Uh, yeah. Pizza mon and kare mon and whatever. Uh, non? Uh, Are you sure it's not non? Mon. Non is the non is the bread. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. curry bread. So anyway, so we picked that shit up, and we're sitting, like, on, on the wall on the street, right, waiting for this guy to pull through. And this old lady just starts talking to us. Um, <laughs> and she's so old. She's, like, 85, 90 years old. And she is treating us like Thank we're Thank you for clarifying, by the way. And so old, just starts talking, and I'm like – please talk into my Google Translate because I have no idea what you're saying. And I tell her this multiple times that I'm like, hey, I don't know what you're saying, you know, in Japanese. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I I don't get this. And so 
she kind of looks at my Google Translate for a second and she's looking at it and she'll she'll push it away. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you want. <laughs> Again, then she'll keep talking to me and she'll talk to me about like her kids. And I, I'm picking out a little bit of shit here about her kids and her uncle. And she's saying like her dad built this house and you know what I mean? Like it's interesting stuff, mm-hmm. but I'm like, girl, I'm not picking up any of this. And she seriously talks to us for like 20, 25 minutes. And Charlton's just standing there and he's like, yeah. Uh-huh. Cause he doesn't speak like any Japanese. And he's like, uh huh. Yeah. You're like, smile and nod you know and uh finally this motherfucker rolls up and he like like real fucking chad looking japanese dude you know what i mean <laughs> like he's got the pompadour and the cool guy sunglasses and pants that are way too tight uh <laughs> and he gets us in his car and drives us to this like little lot that's like four blocks away where the sema is sitting and it's just mm-hmm. a SEMA. It's like a SEMA in like two other cars just sitting in the wide open. You know, we run in, start it, yeah. and drove it away. And that was that. was that. And the SEMA drove really nice on the way home. But um, yeah, dude, that was a weird pickup too. Uh, yeah. Your pickup was interesting because the motherfucker was driving from like Nagoya and didn't meet us till three in the morning <laughs> or two in the morning or whatever. And he had I his mean, whole yeah. family that they rode in an S15 <laughs> back. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, do you remember that? That was pretty fun. Yes, dude. I, re- <laughs> <laughs> I remember like we were just standing underneath this bridge or whatever. Like, I don't know. Where, where's the car at? That was so sketchy. I'm like, why the fuck are we away. in this bridge, first of all? <laughs> we met him in Nagoya, but he came from like Hamamatsu or something, right? He came from like mm-hmm. a totally different city. And yeah, we met him in a bridge and they just pulled over under the bridge like two in the morning. There's no traffic on the roads. And... Just gave us the car. And then, you know, he was Filipino. So then his brother came, who was also Filipino, and his mom mm-hmm. came. And I, I, it was just the three of them, right? Was there another one? Yeah, yeah. No, I think there was just the three of them. And then they all just get in his brother's S15 and drove like <laughs> an hour and a half back home. And I thought like that, a that clown was the funniest car type thing. situation. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was funny. So you were it, telling the stories about the other cars you went and picked up, Rick, and you're like, oh, we went to 7-Eleven. We went here. And me and you, we went to like a sex toy shop. And we're like, let's just walk around this multi-level sex toy shop until the car I don't up. remember this at all. <laughs> what? You don't remember that? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we went and got some freaking chew highs. And we're just like walking around. It's like, we still got some hours to kill. Like, what do you want to do? It's like, I don't remember this at this? all. <laughs> yeah, I remember it very clearly. <laughs> I mean, let me make it very clear. I don't put that past myself whatsoever, but I don't remember doing that. I, I, you know, all the sex shops just blurred together. I just... <laughs> oh man, man, dude, Jessica used hey, to bro. Jess, Jessica used to go to work, and then I was like, all right, bet we're going to Hachinohe. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, nah, they're oh, uh, man. That's a whole that other side of Japan. That's a whole that different side. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But uh, yeah, that. we were supposed to be talking about Japan in general, but I think we've we've had a really good enlightening discussion about what's it like trying to buy Japanese cars off of random strangers twelve hours away yeah. in Japan. Yeah, well, we so had a very unique experience too. I think just because <laughs> most people will buy and then ship it. You know, like yeah. really 95% of people will do that. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I do think that you and I had very unique experiences going and picking these cars up. And like, I wouldn't trade that for anything. I thought that that was, those were some of the best memories that I have from Japan. Um, yeah. And so, no, I just thought, you know, man, I, I'm just even looking at a map of Japan. I'm getting sad again because I'm like, fuck, dude. Like I've been watching uh, James May, our man in Japan. Oh, dude, and that show a, is so hilarious. <laughs> what a good series. It's so good. It's so and funny. It's, it's funny because, of, like, just the amount of things that he finds himself doing. Obviously, yeah. they planned it out. But, yeah, just what a, what a, I don't know, man. It, that's the you shit I watch when I want to get sentimental. Yeah, well, so that's why I didn't watch it when it first came out, because I didn't want to watch it because it would make me nostalgic. And I didn't yeah. want to watch some other person going to Japan and learning the things I already knew. Like, you know, I don't want right. to watch some foreigner going around and learning things that I already knew because I'll just be sitting there like, oh, you didn't know that fucking dumbass. But 
after watching it, and I should have known this because it's freaking James May, the way he does it is, is so humble about the way he approaches stuff, but he calls Japan a lot of their bullshit. Like, especially like when he's talking to the translators and they just have like so many awkward conversations where they're like saying stuff and he just looks at them like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. So, yeah, I love that show. Man. Yeah, I think we definitely had a unique experience there um, just with car culture in general. And, uh, mm-hmm. I'm looking at our talking points here because what Darius and I did is we, we sat on a call for like an hour before this episode and we were like, all right, what are we going to talk about? Um, and we didn't even get to, I mean, should we just keep going, man? I know we're kind of running over time, but should we just talk? Cause we didn't talk about what struggles we had in Japan. I mean, we kind of did, but we didn't talk about, mm-hmm. you know, like you really don't consider, you know, especially in Misawa stores close at like seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Um, yeah. Like, you know, and on top of that, shipping is a struggle, even though, like, we figured it out. Um, buying things online is not easy. Like, Yahoo Auctions was probably the easiest place to buy things from, but you don't want to buy everything from there. You know, when yeah. I was trying to buy video games off of, uh, you know, what was the uh, K's? Was that the electronic store? Um, yeah. You try to buy anything online, your A, most times your credit card doesn't work online. And so and that mm-hmm. was the big thing for uh Yahoo auctions. That's why we had to pay at Lawson's was because our credit cards would not work. They will in person, but I don't know why, man. And I still haven't figured this out, um, why it would not work. I think it was the billing address had to be a Japanese billing address and it wouldn't Yeah, I think so too. Compute. I never it I let tried you it once in it as it. an American address. Yeah. Well, see, but, that's not true, though, because I ordered stuff from the Nismo online store to my house in Japan, and that worked. So I don't really? know. It, it, it's different from website to website. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Because, like, Auto Way, um, I could, well, again, I guess I paid for tires at Lawson's. So most things that I would yeah. order online, I would have to go to Lawson's to pay for. And and okay. their, their convenience stores over there are kind of basically post offices too. You can go and pay for things online, which is great. You can buy movie tickets. You can buy train. No, you can't buy train tickets. Can you? I'm, you can buy honestly, bus I'm tickets. I'm probably sure you could. Yeah. Yeah. You can <laughs> Maybe buy we bus didn't know, but shit. you could buy everything from there. You could buy concert yeah. tickets, a ticket to anything you could think of. Yeah, you could mail things out from from their convenience stores. You could also receive yeah. mail there. I mean, it was those were huge. They were such a crutch for um, so many different things. And so that's how we did almost everything. But if you wanted to do anything else online, it was really really hard. And finding events was really hard. I think too, just in terms of car shows or mm. drift events. Like MSP was different because they had a yearly schedule of like, okay, this weekend is this and this weekend is that. But mm-hmm. um, finding you know car shows and vip events and itasha events and whatever was i had a lot of trouble with that um so not everybody so just just to like kind of generalize it so would you say your biggest struggle living in japan was just the fact that you are a foreigner in general like you don't like you know what you see on the internet and everything but you don't know the it's hard to get in deep into the culture like, you know, the surface level stuff, you know, what tracks to go to, whatnot. But like day to day living, it, it's hard to, you know, we were there for years and I really didn't feel like I was really getting it until I was de- damn near time to leave. You know what I mean? Right. No, you're totally right. I mean, it, it takes such a long time. And I think it would have helped, too, if we were actually like embedded in Japan. It was a lot different being on base, you know? Yeah. Um, you don't really it's like i feel like when you go there for for anybody that wants to go there and live there i do think it would be easier to just start their living like you know what i mean i've got friends that are there as civilians that just showed mm-hmm. up and like got a rental and uh you know live completely off base and i think it's a little bit easier for them to kind of figure out how things work whereas for us mm-hmm. we have like this safety net of the base and a lot of people just stay stay inside the gates figuratively speaking yeah. and I, looking back i even think i did too even though i didn't didn't feel like it at the time because you have this whole community of other americans there to lean on um so it almost made it discouraging to go out and try to find things that were japanese because it just felt so daunting and intimidating to like put yourself out there as an american that didn't know the language mm-hmm. completely yeah um 
Yeah, it was tricky, Matt. I mean, it was really, really tricky. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Like, I, I really do want to move back. Um, either there or New Zealand. I want to I want to fucking move. So I need to tell my wife to hurry her shit up so we can leave. <laughs> yeah. But, I'll say, um, so for me, just real quick, my biggest struggle living, especially Masawa specifically, was the fact that Masawa and Jared talked about it earlier, isn't a big, it's, it's like farm country, you know? It's like living out in the countryside, which yeah, yeah. I generally like, but that means you don't get a lot of the amenities that you're used to. Like most places in Masawa didn't take cards. Like 